As Scottish educators or Scottish learners, you'll know that we have access to GLOW and within that we have two very powerful industry standard productivity suites, um, G Suite for Education and Microsoft Office 365. And today we're going to have a wee look at two of those tools within Microsoft Office 365 for presentations. And what we're going to cover today are some tools within those two in presentation creating so pieces of software that you might not know about or you might have heard about but just not very sure how to use them and what this will do is it will help you save time when you're creating presentations allowing you just to concentrate more on the content um, and these tools will take care of the appearance so it's going to help you save a good bit of time and help your presentations to just be a wee bit more creative, a wee bit more professional looking. But first of all, we're going to have a wee look at how do we get access to these. So you may have heard that you can download um, the Office 365 apps onto your devices at home. Um, and you may be aware that you can use them online and offline. So let's take a little look at how you can get them in the first place. Okay, so I'm just going to come out of this presentation. Okay, and to pull up. Okay, can you see that okay, Richard? Has my Glow launch pad appeared? Uh, yeah, you got it's it. fine. So on my launch pad, the top symbol here, the little person symbol, that's my personal launch pad and that's the one that I can change and have the tiles that I use the most often on. Um, if you don't have this set up already, you know, this is the one we're looking for first, Microsoft Office 365 Home. You just, oops, did I need to do that. Use the bar at the side to scroll down to the very bottom of your launch pad and there'll be a blank tile here that says add. Click on add and you're looking for app from library. And then you do a little search for Microsoft Office. And if we just click go, Office 365 Home comes up. Another one that's really handy to have on your launch pad is this one here, Download Office Now. So this is the one that lets you download these apps and have them on your laptop, tablet, mobile phone, and whatever your devices are. And then you can use them offline as well. So if you're ever out and about and you don't have an internet connection, but you want to make some tweaks to your presentation, you can do that from using the app. So Office 365 Home and Download Now are the ones that you are looking for. And you would just click on that and then it will say add to launch pad. It's saying remove from my launch pad because I already have it. And then when you click add, it will then put it as a wee shortcut for you on your um, personal homepage there on the Glow launch pad. So I'm just going to open Office 365 so that I can get into PowerPoint. And what happens is Everything that we have access to within Office 365 pops up. And I'm just going to select PowerPoint here. Now this is Microsoft PowerPoint Online. So this is the online version that requires an internet connection. The difference between that and the downloadable app that you will have uh, um, downloaded on your devices if you choose to do that there's quite a few differences and we'll go through things today and I'll let you know you know what you can do online and what you can do offline but basically there's a wee bit more that you can do offline there's some more tools and more features in the offline version that you don't have yet on the online version but the beauty of Microsoft um, and G Suite as well is that evergreen products have continually been updated um, and you know that there's new features being added all the time so Chances are if you're looking for something, it won't be too long before it does appear um, on the online version. So I've just opened up a brand new slide here, a brand new presentation. Um, but the first thing that I need to do is just rename it. So rather than doing a file save as on the online version, you simply just go up to the middle of the ribbon. Here it says presentation 15 because I've probably got another 14 demo presentations that I've not yet named. And I'm just going to give this a wee name, Demo Ed Scott. And I'm just going to hit return and that's saved that right there. 
Now, depending on where I am, what happens, you know, I might accidentally close my browser down or I might lose internet connection. I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to keep hitting save because it's online. It's automatically doing that for me. And I would just go back to my Glow Launchpad, back in through PowerPoint. And um, I'll just close that one down. And we go, and you will see that I can access it. I've just refreshed it there. Right here. So it's right at the top of my recent file. So I'm always going to be able to find it there. So that's just really a wee, a wee quick bit of housekeeping first, um, just before we get started with the design tools. Um, so you'll know where it always is. It's just it's a different way of working if you've never used the cloud and the um, OneDrive and the online way of working. Um, but once you start using it, you'll find it really does save you so much time. Um, and it's really easy to access it no matter what device you're on. Okay, so I'm just going to go back into that at the moment. Oh, sorry, I want to go to a brand new one. So when you start a brand new PowerPoint presentation, for quickness, rather than starting with a completely blank slide like I did here, and it would probably take me quite a bit of time to make it look nice, you know, I had different backgrounds, different themes, um, as well as putting my content on, what I can do is I can use the... I can go to new and I can start off with the themes that are already in here. So I'm just going to click on this one at the moment for quickness. And it has given me this template here. So it started off, it's given me my first slide with a nice title slide and a subtitle slide. And then I can change this really easily by just typing straight into it. And then if I want to add a new slide underneath, I can do so and I can choose the different layouts. So I might want to have, you know, a second title slide and I might want to add a picture onto that. And I'm going to show you something that you may never have came across before and it's something that I use now all the time um, and it saves me lots and lots of time. I might want to add a little picture here. And I'm just going to add a picture. I could choose it from my device. I could choose it from OneDrive. I could choose it from the Microsoft stock images. I'm just going to go into Bing Pictures here. And what's really handy about Bing Pictures is they're all in a Creative Commons license. So the pictures that are in here um, are safe for us to use. We don't need to worry about copyright. We don't need to worry about getting permission to use these. And that's just really good um, digital literacy to point out with if you're working with learners, you know, have we got permission to use this? Who created it? So I'm just going to click on this first symbol here. I'm going to just pop it in. Now, can you see over here on the right what's popped up? We've got the designer tool. This is a really great time-saving tool and it lets you, as soon as you pop a picture on, it could be one picture, two pictures, however many pictures you want, it pops up these options down the right-hand side and you can choose from these different layouts. So I'm just going to click on this one. If you're not keen on that, you can choose another one. So that's a really great time-saving feature to make your slides look really professional, really creative without having to spend the time cropping things, resizing things, you know, adding different backgrounds here and there, which can be really time-consuming and a wee bit frustrating if you can never get it to look quite right. So that's something that I would um, really encourage that you have a wee look at um, the next time you're putting together um, a PowerPoint. Okay. Now, I'm just going to move on to the offline version to show you something else, a wee bit like the, the themes that popped up, the different choices that popped up there at the start of the, the online version. But down here in the offline version, I'm just going to go to a new PowerPoint. So here we have all the themes again that we can choose from, various templates. But in the offline version, there's an addition to that. There's something here called Quick Starter. And this not only gives you different layouts, it gives you hints and tips um, what your, on, on what your subject is about. 
as you'll see. So I'm just going to choose this volcano one here. So what PowerPoint has done is it's split up different pieces of information about volcanoes. So you might want to have, let me just take this one off, a little bit of information about plate tectonics. So you wanted to have a bit about volcanic features. I'll just take, take off some of these so you can have a wee look at what it looks like. And then it asks you what theme you would like. I think this black one here is quite nice. I'm just going to click on that one. Okay, and then what it does for you is it gives you an outline to get you started. So there's a little blurb there about volcanoes. Related topics, different slides with different headers on them. It's giving you an example of a content slide. You could, of course, change this depending on what your, your content was going to be. You can copy, delete, duplicate as many different slides as you want. Okay, so I've already showed you the design um, ideas, but I'll just go over it once more to show you what it can do if you have some more pictures. So I've clicked on this volcano slide, but up here I would like to add some pictures. I'd like to add a few different pictures. And let's see what it comes up with. So go for this one. Do it again. Go for this one. And I'll just do one more. Oops, easy. And let's go for this one. And then over on the right, the Design Ideas tool has sprung into action and it's given me quite a few different layouts. I think I quite like, oh, I like the look of this one. So there you are. You can see how quick and easy that was to create a really eye-catching slide there, one that looks really professional, that would have taken me a lot of time to try and recreate something um, as nice and creative as that. So now, I would maybe want to add some text to this slide, but perhaps um, I'm not maybe not very great at typing, or perhaps I've got ASN, a learner with ASN, who finds it a wee bit easier um, to dictate the text onto her slide. It really depends where you are. You might be working on a train and you don't quite have the space um, yourself to be typing um, text into a slide, so instead you might want to plug your earphones in and you might want to dictate some information onto the slide. So in the online and offline um, versions of PowerPoint, so in the one online within Glow and on the app that you can download, they have something called the Dictate tool. So as long as your cursor's on home, over here on the right, you have this little symbol that says dictate. Now just before you start, it'd be a good idea just to make sure that it's selected to English United Kingdom, just so that it picks up your speech um, a wee bit more easy. So you know, on English United Kingdom and now I'm just going to click dictate. My presentation about volcanoes by Eva Wilkinson. There you are, quick and easy. It's picked up my speech and it's popped it in there. You do have to speak very clearly and very slowly, depending on where you're from. Sometimes accents, you know, you might have to repeat things um, or it might have the odd word that's not quite right that you can just simply go back in um, and put your cursor on, delete and edit. So that's another really great time saving tool. Okay, now perhaps you wanted to add in a little diagram. So let's see, volcanic activity. Okay, so perhaps I wanted to show the stages of what happens in a volcano. When does it erupt? You know, what happens first? What happens next? And so on. So I can do that by adding in, instead of a picture, I can add in some smart art. So up at the insert option. Just mouse over a wee bit to the right. We have the feature Smart Art, and then you've got different styles of Smart Art. 
lists, hierarchy, cycles, pyramids, so on. But I would quite like to show this as a cycle because it happens in a cycle. So I'm just going to choose this one here with the arrows. I'm going to click OK. And then I could edit my text to see you know, what happens here at each stage. Um, so I'm just going to pull this down a wee bit. And I'm just going to take out this bit of text. I'll delete that. There we go. And over here, the designer tools, busy at it again, designing different ideas. Let's go. I quite like the look of this one. And then you could add a picture or you could have text in. Um, over here, entirely up to you what you would have on your slide, but you'll see that it does really save a lot of time and you can have a really professional looking um, presentation in a matter of minutes. All you need to worry about is your content and the design tools take care of the rest. Now, I would like on this slide, traditional beliefs about volcanoes. I'm going to add a little picture here about something that I can remember from my childhood when learning about volcanoes that always used to make me really excited. Okay, I have found a picture here of Edinburgh Castle and I'm just going to pop that into my slide. Now, maybe I don't want the background in my picture. Maybe I don't want the sky in my picture because maybe that blue colour, I don't, you know, it doesn't quite suit the theme of my presentation. So what I can do here, I'll just move it down a little bit. Okay. I'm going to remove the background of this picture. So along the top, selected picture format. So this is the section where you can crop things, you can add frames around things, you can edit your colours and so on, you can you know, layer your pictures to you know front and back, under text and all the rest of it. But I want to take the sky out of this picture so I'm just going to go over here to the left and I now have the option to remove the background. This is only available on the app, the offline version that you download, it's not there on the online version yet. Okay, so what it's done is it's automatically recognised you know, what's in the foreground and what's in the background. If there was little bits missing that I wanted to keep, I could use the markup to draw a line around it um, to tell PowerPoint that no, I actually want to keep that. But everything here that's highlighted in pink, that's going to be removed. So there you can see it removes background and that might be quite nice. Um, you know, if you've got a, a picture of something that there's a, you know, maybe taken in a school, but there's a lot of background behind it and you don't want to have that background and you just want a picture of the piece of work or, you know, whatever it is you're taking the picture of. That's a really handy time saving tool. Saves you having to do freehand cropping around it all, um, which can take a lot of time and can be really fiddly and quite frustrating. Okay, so I think I've got a couple of more things to show you and then I'm going to hand you over to Richard. So I'm just going to add a completely blank slide in here. No, I'm not. Just delete that one. New slide. Blank slide. Now there's a, something in the transitions called morph. So transitions are the way that your slides move into one another. So when you, you click next, when you're in a slideshow, you know, they might come in very softly, they might fade in, they might fade out, they might come in in a sort of circular mode. Um, but there's an option in here called Morph, which is makes it really nice for slides to move so that it looks like it's getting closer, it looks like it's getting further away, um, or it gives you a kind of nice a zoom in effect, and this is called Morph. So for this slide, I'm just going to add in a picture of a volcano again just to keep with my volcano theme. You'll be sick of volcanoes by the time this is over. Let's see this one. And then I'm just going to stretch it and make it full size um, off my slide. Okay, I'm just going to take away that little text box there. Oops, didn't need to do that. There we go. 
and then I'm just going to copy and paste this slide so I've got the exact same but I want this slide to, to be a bit closer to the actual volcano so I'm just going to tap a picture format and then crop I'm just going to zoom in a wee bit on the volcano here and then again I'll just make this one full screen And then I'm going to just do it once more. So I'm going to copy this slide once more. And again, just zoom in, picture format, crop, and just zoom in a wee bit closer. And then I'm just going to stretch it so that it fits the full slide. Okay, and then just going to hold control down so that I can select those three slides together. So one, two, three. And then up here at the transitions option, I'm just going to tap on morph. And that puts that morph option on those three slides. And you'll know that they're going to move because they have the little star um, at the side of them. So I'm just going to click on slide 11 again. Go to slideshow from this slide. Let's have a wee look. So you can see that nice effect. And you can do, there's, there's all sorts of other things that you can do with it. You know, you might have, say on your slide here, you might have, let me see, maybe it's a star. And then in the next slide, you have the same star, but you've just moved it down a wee bit. And then the next slide, the same star, and you've moved it down a wee bit. And then that would give the... Um, the, the feeling of a shooting star. There's all sorts of things you can do with it, but I quite like the morph um, effect that makes it look like it's zooming in on things. Okay, so that's most of the tools that we have looked at. Um, the next thing that I wanted to show you is how to record a PowerPoint presentation. So you might want to record it um, for accessibility reasons. You might want to you know, provide people with a takeaway that they can see in here. Um, or you might just want something that you can um, share to pop on a blog, just something that makes it a wee bit a bit easier um, to revisit and share rather than you know having to read all the slide notes and trying to, to work out what the presenter meant, you can create a recording of it. Now, I can't actually record and screen share at the same time because you wouldn't be able to see um, the options that I was selecting. So what we have instead um, is Susan very kindly recorded um, a video of this and this video is also available for you in the files section so that you can go back um, and follow how to do it again. So I'm just going to launch the slideshow and I'm going to show you how you would record your own PowerPoint video. Okay, so here we've got an example of a PowerPoint all about Egypt and Susan has clicked on insert and she has gone along here to the media option. Okay, now this option um, is available through the, in I think I just said that, sorry, the insert tab. Okay, and she's tapped on screen recording and then what she's done next is she has just minimized her PowerPoint and then she's opened it back up and she's clicked on slideshow. You can either do that from down the bottom here or you can do it from the option up the top and she started a slideshow from the first slide. Now you'll see when it starts recording Susan also has added subtitles um, onto her slideshow. So she's doing a, she's clicking through the slides, she's doing a voiceover, so she's reading through the slides, talking through the slides, but she also has subtitles and I'll show you how to do that in a wee minute also. So it gives you the option of what area you want to select. So you might want to you know, probably just have the full screen um, or it, you, know, you might want to just select certain parts of the screen, but I think full screen would probably be the easiest option. So she's selected full screen okay. and then she's hit record. It gives you a little countdown. So 
So there's no sound on this clip, but she, she's, you can see there that she's been reading through the slides as the subtitles come up in time. Okay. Okay, and then she would just hover back over where she hit record. There's a stop button. And then what PowerPoint Record does is it very quickly um, translates that into a video file. There we go, stop. Very quickly. So just like that, it's appeared there on the first slide. Um, and what Susan has done next here, you'll see in a second, she has just inserted a blank slide. And she has pulled the recording up onto that blank slide. So you could have it as the first slide. You, could, you might want your title slide and then you might want your video and as the second slide or you might want it there at the end. But what that does is that's giving everyone a takeaway of the slides, the text, the notes, the audio recording, the subtitles um, and the video there as well. And then she just does a wee example of playing it back. You also have the option to just save it as a video file, um, so it doesn't have to go in your PowerPoint. It can then be uploaded um, just like this video shows us here to Teams or um, wherever you want to pop it. You might just want to have it for your own reference as well. So this video is here um, in the file section and I also have at the very end there's some links, some Microsoft links and some YouTube links that cover this again because this is a really, really useful um, tool to have. Okay, so that one there. the last, very, very last thing I wanted to show you just before I pass you over to Richard to um, look at Sway is the subtitles. Okay, now I had a bit of bother. I was laughing with Richard this morning saying, you know, I, I couldn't, um, no, it wasn't subtitles. It was the recorder tool. So your subtitles, sorry, are just down here. So when you have launched your slideshow, down here you get the option to play, mark up, and different screen options, search, and then just here, the very second last option, it's quite faint, it looks like it's a circle with a little rectangle and then some dots at the bottom. That is the subtitles tool. And it instantly kicks in when you start talking. And then if you want to stop it, just tap on it again. There you are. Okay, so I'm just going to come out of this slideshow and I am going to go back to our online um, PowerPoint that we have opened and started already because what I was looking for earlier on, I couldn't find it in the, the um, offline version because it's only available in the online version is the rehearsal tool. Okay, now at the top when you click here on slideshow, you have this option here, Rehearse with Coach, and I'll give you a very quick example of what this does for you. Okay, so I've just tapped on Rehearse with Coach, and it's going to listen to me using a bit of AI, it's a bit of artificial intelligence here to listen to me talking through this, or presenting this um, slideshow. Okay, I'm just going to click Start Rehearsing. Good morning everyone and welcome to my presentation all about apples. I'm sure that would be so very exciting. Oops. Okay, then I'm just going to stop the slideshow. And now I should get a wee report about how I got on. So it gives you a bit of summary tells you about your pace, it tells you about your pitch, you know, it picks up if you use, which I do, I know I'll aim all the time, it picks that up, um, it picks up, you know, if you're speaking maybe a wee bit too slowly, if you're maybe using too many words per slide, it picks that all up as well, so that's a really handy tool, um, and that's available in the online version when you click on slideshow and rehearse with coach. So I hope that was really helpful for a, a start for PowerPoint. There's absolutely loads in there. Um, if you've got any questions or if there's anything you want me to go over again, I can do that, no problem. But just for time um, at the moment, I am just going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to pass over to Richard.
Thanks, Richard. Hi, Eva. Hi, Eva. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep, hear you loud and clear. Thanks, Richard. Uh, there was just, just a, a couple of wee questions. Okay. About uh, Hazel had asked, can you get mm -hmm. Scott templates on the online version? And I suggested is getting the version and then uploading it to your online version via the cloud, and then it will always remain there, and then it will yes. be safe. That's a good idea. Uh, I think Ian uh, answered one of the questions for us, which was great, but he's also asked that I tried a few times to launch my PowerPoint online version in the mm -hmm. presentation mode, but it seems to be having trouble launching. I've just tried the exact same thing on my yeah. Scots machine, and yep. it doesn't work. Yep, I'd agree with you there, Ian. I'm not quite sure what the glitch is, but any time I'm out doing a presentation, I always use the offline app um, to present. Any time I've tried to present... Through Glow, um, or sorry, through the online version, I have I do have a wee bit of bother. I even trying, you know, to open it in um, app version, I prefer just to use it um, from the desktop version. Sometimes, I actually, most of the time, I also take a downloaded um, presentation on a USB because I never always know what the tech setup's going to be when I get to the school. Nine times out of ten, I can use my Surface, you know, I have different connectors, but sometimes it's just a no. Um, please don't touch, you know, any of our cables. Please just use um, what we've provided you with. So I'll always just take it along um, on a wee USB so that I'm prepared there as well. Okay. Are you okay now? Yeah, we'll go on. I'll just speak, share my screen. Great. Uh, can you see that, Eva? Yep, we can see. Thanks. No worries. Let's just minimise these, get started. Cool. So, really good um, presentation there from Eva on PowerPoint. Um, my name's Richard McKean, and um, Eva's already introduced me, so I won't go into any more details. Uh, just going to show you Sway, because um, like uh, PowerPoint, it's a really useful, power, powerful tool uh, that sits within Glow uh, that you can use to make stories, presentations, report, to collaborate, any of these things at all. There's two ways of getting it. One is with Factors 3. You can come in via your mail account and get it. You can also add it, uh, like Eva showed you at the start. Let's get into the app library and then searching for it up at the top right hand side and just putting in sway and then going and then you can add it the exact same way as Eva showed you how to add um, Office 365 uh, mine's already there so I'm not going to add it the other way to do it is just to type in sway into your, your URL bar at the top and you can log in the exact same way and what it asks you to do is to enter, I'm already logged in, but it would ask you to enter your uh, Glow credentials and at that point you would be able to get via your Glow account. So that's two different ways of getting it. One, straight through Glow, or like I say, you can go straight in via the um, via the website itself in Microsoft. Uh, it's all online. There isn't a downloadable version that you can use offline. Uh, so it's all online, it's all cloud-based and it saves automatically, which is really useful. Uh, if you have a power cut, power cut or your children uh, distract you and you have to go away or anything at all, it saves automatically. So it's really, really good for things like that. Uh, as I said, it allows you to create, share interactive reports, presentations, stories and more. It, it's really nice. It's a really simplistic way of creating quite uh, eye-catching content for whatever uh, you or whoever you want to present it to. It's, it's, it has less features than PowerPoint. Um, so uh, it doesn't do as many things, it doesn't have as many cool things like Eva showed you there, like getting rid of the background and doing the morphing tool, but it, it does have some nice features, and it does sway, it kind of moves slightly differently, and that is a nice feature, uh, again, depending on the audience you want to use it for. I've just got some examples to show you of different kind of settings that we've seen it used within schools. Uh, there's an early years one here, and this harvest, one here, and this was one Eva had already shared with me, so I'm not claiming any credit for that at all. Uh, when you go into this way immediately, uh, you kind of see your edit mode. So this is all your content. But if I just play that to show you how it looks, um, it's got little images, it's got nice text, 
uh, it's got a nice background for younger children. You can add images, you can put in text, you can split pages slightly differently, exact same way to, as Eva was showing you with the different layouts, you can have within individual slides, within PowerPoint, within Sway, you can have some with text, some with images. You can bring the attention to headlines and you can also embed sound and images and videos. So that's one way of doing it. Um, my background's primary school uh, and uh, love doing reading and writing with children. Uh, and I like the fact that with uh, Sway, as I said, with the early years example there, you can embed lots of content and external links very, very quickly. Um, with this one, it's rolled down and I've added videos and I've added links to websites and I've added images and all these types of things. So when I show you that, again, you can make it bright and you can make it bold. You can use little headlines and headings to draw attention to the learners or whoever it is you want to look at this. They can play videos, they can click links the same way any link sits in any document. You can create bold images to draw attention. And all these links here, characters and stories, go to the external loan down um, uh, website. So again, really easy to do within Sway because it has uh, a limited amount of options and the things you can do. So you kind of stuck with the things that uh, you can link to. So if I just go back again, so that's the old down one. The other one is... Uh, another science one. Um, if you don't want to give all the information and you just want pupils or learners or, or adults or whoever it is, you can use the share tool. And I'll go into that in a wee bit more detail later. But this one, what you would do is just provide people, whoever that is, whoever you want to share it with, whoever you want to be able to collaborate and edit the actual document that they can then begin to create their own content. So you could only give them the titles of things. This is a science one. And then you would expect the person that you've shared it with to then begin to add the content. So that's kind of three examples of how you could use Sway. There is lots and lots and lots. That's just a few today. As I say, you can create any interactive report, any presentation or any story. So how do you start? Uh, there's really three quick ways to start. You can create a brand new one which is here, and that creates a, a brand new blank template. You can start from a topic, uh, and Sway can give you some topics, and if I click on that, if you type in what you want, and there it gives you examples, it will give you an outline. So it will begin to create an outline for you. So there's that feature, which is really useful. If you're stuck for starter, you can. You might feel that you have a wee, need to have a play about with the actual how it presents. It might not go the way you want, the slides might, might not together the cards, the sway cards, but it gives you a starter. You can also upload from existing documents. So you, if you have um, Word documents or PowerPoints that you've already created and you have them somewhere, you either have them saved to a hard drive on your laptop, desktop, or you have them within um, a cloud-based shared facility, sharing facility, saving facility, then you can upload them from there and they just go straight in. Uh, if you have a Word document that has a title and an image, and some text. Sway's quite smart that way. It splits uh, the title into its own card, the text into its own card, and then the image into its own card, and then you can pull all that together to make it into one card, and I'll show you how to do that as well. So there's different ways. There's also other templates here, uh, which you can open up, and also you can be inspired by some of the things I showed. So there's lots and lots of different options of how you can do it. I'm just going to begin to create a new one to kind of show you the actual features within Sway and what's there. Is that okay so far, Eva? Any questions? No, nope, we're all good so far. Thanks, Richard. Cool. So, Kate and your sway, it always starts with a title. So, I'm just going to make a really, really quick one on Scotland. Um, if I wanted to make the text bolder, I can. If I want to give it a little slant, I can. And then I can add uh, in some images here by clicking this image, and I can drag them across. Um, Sway, like PowerPoint and how Eva showed you the Bing feature there, it already searches for you. So Power by Bing, YouTube and Wikipedia, these all have Creative Commons on them. So you've got permission to use these images or videos that sit within uh, Sway. So that's really, really handy if you're looking for things. Um, it also shows you your last ones that you've been looking at. I'm glad they're quite safe, like animals, food and backgrounds and not something else. Uh, so you've got Scotland there because we're going to do Scotland and then it will begin to look for suggestions. And as you can see there, 
it's including copyright. Gets you your different images. Also, if I clicked on videos here, um, it would give me video options. So there's lots and lots of stuff. And there it is, Creative Commons only, so you know they're safe to use, and they're okay, and you have the permissions. Back to images, always tend to look for images that are quite big in size, which have large numbers, uh, as I would tell my pupils in class, because then they don't become all pixelated. Uh, and then I can drag it across here, or I can click it, and I can add it. Like most facilities and most uh, online versions of uh, Word or PowerPoint, there's a few different ways of doing something. So I'm just going to add that, and there you go, it goes in there. And that's my very first slide. If I go and play, you'll see my first slide. That's the headline I've added. Um, title, it's nice and bold. And, uh, and it's got a Scotland flag. So I can go back to edit. I can then begin to add more content by clicking this. And this is where you get your different options of the things that you want to add. The first one there was a heading. So if I wanted to separate, like I showed you in the science report, different headings and draw attention to headings, I can use headings. If I just want to add text, I can add text. If I want to insert images and stacks, and also here uh, I've got a little upload, so I, if I had images on my own device, that would just take me to the, the, the my documents or um, download folder, depending on where your device defaults to. Again, just breaks it down again, you've got text, you've got different media, and you can add images, videos, audio, embed, and you can upload. So if you wanted to embed something from a website, you can. And then you've got different image options here, you can have images in a grid, you can have Im images to compare different images, and I quite like that. Uh, I know Eva likes stack, so I'll show you these both in a wee minute. So I'll go back to text, and if I wanted to add text, I would just hit text, and there I can add text. This is all about Scotland. And again, if I wanted to make it bigger, I can. If I had an external link to a website, I could add that in there, and that would be, look here, and I'm just going to use www.bbc.co.uk. So display this text, but it'll go to this site. So there you go, this is all about Scotland. Where I go to the play option, up here at the top right hand side, you'll see how that looks. So I've got a Scotland, and here, this is all about Scotland, that's the type of text, and if I click there, that will take me to the BBC website. So that's really quite good as well. Uh, signposting people to external sites. Uh, if I want to add something again, I can go here, and this time I can go to different media. So if I had images, video, and this one's really cool, uh, and I was talking to other colleagues this morning in Education Scotland about adding audio to uh, Sway for another another project, and Eva's just going to do this bit. Is that okay, Eva? Because it doesn't work on Scots, unfortunately. Yeah, no problem. I'm just answering a wee question here. <laughs> yeah, okay, doc. So, do you want me just to take over screen yeah, share this now, and I'll go on and do that? No problem. Yeah. Okay, so screen one, and then I'll just open my browser back up again. Already got Sway there waiting. Um, so, I will just go to a new Sway. Skip the title part. I'm going to add a new card. So, I've gone to the little plus symbol to add a new card and I'm looking for media and then I want to add some audio and I used to use this a lot um, when I was based in ELC so we would have maybe a photograph or it would be a photograph of a child's drawing or a video or whatever but you wanted to capture the child's voice and obviously at the early level they're, you know they're not all writing and what have you so the easiest way to do that was to simply record um, so you can either drag an audio file in that you have um, already recorded and saved to your device or you can hit record. So you get a little countdown again like you did with PowerPoint. And then you speak very clearly and Sway will pick up what you're saying and type it into, not type it, sorry, it will add an audio recording into the card. Getting mixed up there with um, Dictate, I think. So let's hear that back. There we go. And then if you're happy with it, you can add it to Sway. If you're not happy with it, you can re-record it. If you, you know, you just changed your mind, you can just delete that um, altogether. So I'll just pop that in there. It was also 
useful for um, a few years ago when I was in nursery. We had a lot of children, almost it was nearly about a quarter of um, English as additional language children. So we would have their um, recordings and um, their whatever their language was, and then on the next card we would have you know the, the same picture or the same drawing again, but then with the the English recording there as well. So it was really useful. Just taking a wee minute. Let it work. Just about there. There you go. So when I hit play, I don't have a title or anything there, but this is how it would appear. Okay, is that all right, Richard? Yeah, brilliant. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Is that okay? You see my screen again, yeah? Yep, we can see it, yep. Cool. So thanks for that. Yeah, uh, one of the biggest hurdles, I think, is coming over what does where, when. <laughs> so, like, you've got offline, online, and then you've got a Scots machine in between all that. It's worth having a think about how you want to do things. The colleagues I spoke to this morning, uh, because the Scots machine wasn't allowing them to um, upload using the microphone, they were just recording themselves in WhatsApp and their iPhones, and then they were sending, they were emailing them themselves the little uh, sound files, and then they were just pulling them across. As Eva said, there you, you don't need to put in automatically; you can also upload the little sound files. So there's there's, there's definitely workarounds things. So here we have uh, the little uh, sway that I've started here, the Scotland one, and if I wanted to create uh, some sort of um, cool content, some striking images, I can begin to do that by again inserting new content using one of the sway cards. So I just press plus and I can begin to build the stack. So I'll show you how to do that. Now it is a bit footery the stack and there's kind of the way I've found of doing it is to drag the photographs across at this point. Uh, when I go to add it it doesn't really let me do that. So the easiest way to do it is to drag across. So I'm going to drag uh, some files across from Scotland and again I'm going to look at the big kind of hitters there with the good big numbers because that helps me for the pixelation and then I'm going to drag another one and this is where you need to be careful if you drag it here it doesn't go into the stack so you can see that green bar if you dip, drag it there it's now in that stack stack so you can see them all coming together so I'm going to drag that one uh, I'm going to drag the Kelpies and I'll drag a uh, wasp monument so I've got different ones uh, if anyone knows the names of these castles, you can put them in the comments box. It's always nice to find stuff out. So, uh, And if I got to play, uh, I'm going to hit play now, and now we will begin to see the sway. So there's the images and how they've been stacked. And as I click on them, you'll see they kind of flick through nicely, as if you were actually flicking through something physical. So it's a kind of nicer format than just having photographs and images side by side. But you can, you can do that, it's entirely up to you. The way to do that is to add in new images. And as you see here, this is now getting in the stack, so I'm just going to drag that off. Oops. Just going to bin that. There's that one. Get rid of that. Here we go. There we go, I've got a new image in here. And, oh, it's not that one, is it? Sorry, it's going to be a bit clunky here. And I can add in a new image here. That's my new image. And I can have another image here. And I can have another image here. Just get rid of that one. That should be there. There we go. Have they all disappeared? No, I don't know why, but I can't kind of scroll down on the screen. I've got to play. See them. See that okay, Eva? Yeah? Yep, you can see that. No, no, it, it wouldn't let me scroll down to the bottom of my screen for some yeah. strange reason. So if you just add in three images there, you'll see how they come in differently. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. So down here, I'm going to add something new in again. Um, and again, I'm going to add in an image. Oh, not that one. I'm going to add in a comparison, sorry. Down here. And that's within group. And I can use the comparison tool. And this time I get the option to compare two objects. That's good for discussion around things. 
So if I wanted to describe something which I thought was maybe slightly newer with something that was slightly older, again, when I go up to play uh, and I go across, this time I've got these two images and what I can do is I can drag my little slider across here to kind of compare things. And that could be comparing absolutely anything that you wanted to compare. Could be big and small, could be absolutely anything. So it's nice, another nice little feature. Somebody asked about adding in the Word document. Yeah. So I'll show you how to do that now. Yeah, that's so Again, true. I'll go back down to add new content by pressing a little green plus. I'll go back to media. And this time I want to upload something. Uh, and what that will go to, go to is my computer itself. It will go into my folder. And here I've got one called Sway Away. And I'm just going to choose that. And it will begin to upload that. Uh, and what that is, is a Word document that has in it, it has a, a header the same way you would have a header and a footer. So it's a header within the Word document. So it knows to make that the heading card. It has some text, which was just taken from the internet. And it also has an image. And how that looks when you put that into the sway from an existing document that you've already created uh, is like that. So that becomes the title card, that becomes the text, and that becomes the image. So again, you can go back and play about with how you would want that to look. There's different ways to kind of combine your sway cards. Richard, when I was um, still working in the nursery, that was really handy for newsletters. So we would have a basic Word document and all the staff would input their updates about their areas of distributive leadership. And then we would put it through a sway just to make it that wee bit more interactive and bring the, the links to life and so on. Cool. So back to these images. If you wanted focus points as well, you can have different focus points. So there's lots of dot different options. You can add text to these images um, and also you can make the images small, uh, medium and large. So there's different things you can play about. You can have two small images beside one large images, just depending on how you want your layout to look. The way I added the, um, the Word document there would be the exact same way I would add a PowerPoint document. Again, I would go into insert content, I would go to upload and I would begin to add the PowerPoint in it decides within the PowerPoint pages what's the title, what is the kind of main body of text and what's the image. And again, within the suite itself, you can play about with how they look if it doesn't look the way you want. So there's different ways of doing it. So that's kind of everything, Eva, I would say, think about within the actual suite itself. Um, in case I kind of play about with the cards, but I can show you some other features. The um, stack features are really nice one if you've maybe been in a school and have a lot of photographs. Um, it's a nice one that you can then you can physically swipe through it and you can you know, stop and have talking points and certain pictures. Um, that's one of my favourite features, certainly. We've got a couple yeah. of questions there, Richard, just about Sway um, not being available in some local authorities. So that I'm not really sure of you know the, the context of that, but it just might be that um, they're not using Microsoft Office 365, I'm not really sure, um, but you can share a Sway um, completely externally. We used to have Sway learning stories shared um, for all our parents. We certainly couldn't edit and collaborate on them, but they could view them. Um, so I would really need a wee bit more information on you know, why um, maybe people aren't able to access it. Um, and then Fran there just pointed out um, something really important. Um, Richard, that immersive readers not kicked in yet on Sway. Yeah, um, that's and that's correct. just something that we need to bear in mind because um, you know we can't then ensure that the text is completely accessible. But like I said at the beginning about Microsoft being an evergreen um, product, hopefully that is something that's been worked on um, at the moment. Um, Fran, I don't know if you're aware, has anything been um, shared with Mike and Microsoft about this? If not, it's something that we could um, perhaps ask. Linking with, uh, speaking with Call about that, they've actually been in touch with Microsoft and I've just sent Kirsty an email this morning. So hopefully we'll, yourselves um, and us, will have a chat with Call. Super, thanks Fran. Call Scotland are certainly on the ball when it comes to all of this. So thanks for that. Thank you. 
Okay, so just kind of three wee quick things to finish to kind of play the design, the share, and the more options. Uh, within the design, uh, you've got your storyline, which is kind of your edit board for all your different sway cards. Up here at the top hand, right hand side, you have design, and over at the, the right hand side, you have styles, and this is where <coughs> you can change. <coughs> Excuse me. How you want your sway to sway and flow? Do you want it to scroll vertically like a web page would, or uh, as Eva I think mentioned earlier on and commented on, you can scroll it from left to right as if you're flicking through a book. That's my personal favourite. I do quite like that. You can have bland, bland or slides um, and not sway kind of vertical. You can change the colours. There's different colour options here, and there's different background options. Um, so there's lots and lots of different things you can do to kind of change how, how it looks uh, and how it's illustrated to viewers. You also have customise, and you can get into customise here. And you can actually pick your own um, own colours, and you can also change how text is seen if you want to make it larger. Again, depending on who's reading that and how you need it to read, uh, you can make the, the, the text slightly larger. You've obviously got uh, the share options also up here at the top right hand side which allows you to do a diff few different things you can share with specific people or groups those within your organization with the link or like Eva was saying there anyone with the link so if you wanted to put this somewhere external for for people who don't have access to code and you wanted them to be able to view it like a newsletter then you can give them the link dead easy so you can give them the link and the link is here and you can just copy it by clicking that or you can just copy the whole thing as normal uh, if you want people to edit it, you can give them the, the code to edit it as well. Um, make sure that, that when you don't then share that link to anyone and you just want them to view it, that you don't share them that code because that is the edit code. You only want people to view it, so you get different options there. And down here as well, if you really wanted to make it even more secure, you have uh, password options as well. So there's different options of how you can get people to share and collaborate. As I said, uh, you can have it as a closed document, you can have it as an open document, or you can share it with different people um, to then collaborate on it. Over here, you've got the more options. Uh, you can create a brand new one here. If you wanted to duplicate this way for lots and lots of different um, different people who you wanted to collaborate on their own individual sway, uh, from a school point of view, it's not like in Google Classrooms where you can share to for each individual people to edit on. It only gives you one option to share this way and everyone will be able to edit on that edit option I showed you there. But you can duplicate that slide uh, that way, sorry, for lo lots and lots, as many times as you wanted to for different people to. You can print it and you can also export it. Export it, you can export it in PDF or you can export it in Word, and that kind of helps at the moment to answer that immersive reader option because you can export it in Word and then you can use the immersive reader option that sits within Word that doesn't sit within Sway. Um, so you would be able to do that and learners would be able to listen to it. So that's one way of getting around it. That's a good um, tip. Thanks, Richard. So that's really it. If I go back to the kind of main desktop view, uh, so... You can create new, you can start from a topic, or you can go over, uh, start from a Word document, a PowerPoint you just not have. Also, this I'm sure this feature wasn't here last week. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't, but it's there now. And you've got some more tutorials about Sway, which take you to Microsoft, and Eva's going to speak a wee bit more about the other options within Microsoft. Is that okay for Sway? Do you want me to add anything, Eva? I think that's pretty much the way it works. Yeah, we're all up to date there with the questions, so thank you very much. I'll just cool. share my screen now, but couple of slides just to finish up. Okay, is my screen there okay Richard? Yep. Okay, so just a couple of places to go for some additional help um, really quickly because we've just run over by one minute. Um, Glow Connect on the web, you don't need to log in via Glow, really useful, helpful place where you can get help and information about all um, the productivity suites within Glow. There's lots of like takeaway guides and things that you can use um, that give you step-by-step -step guidance. Um, and also the Microsoft Educator Community. Um, if you've not got this tile added onto your um, personal launch pad, you can find it um, down here on the Education Scotland one. This is a really useful place for small, um, short, sort of 30 minute bite sized courses. Um, you can either um, access the courses um, just to have a look at the information or you can take the little tests 
cards that are at the end and gain the badges and the certificates. I'll show you a wee bit quickly what that looks like in a minute. But another path um, to be able to find that is if you go through our team's um, tile, our technologies community tile, into the digital literacy section, we then have three different professional development pathways for Google, Microsoft and um, Apple Teachers. So three different websites um, that will take you directly there. There's also a really useful link to the Microsoft Student Help Centre. Loads of good hints and tips in there and a lot of slightly frequently asked questions um, in there too. So when you click on the Microsoft Educator tile, it'll ask, you um, to create an account you just simply use your glow login and then I've just pulled out um, a couple of really handy courses that we've kind of covered today that you can go into in a wee bit more depth this one here's my absolute favorite this is more of what Richard covered today but you can just go through it at your own pace um, what I do um, quite often is I'll maybe use my phone um, to look at the courses I'll you know, pause at certain points and then I'll be doing the, the tasks at the same time because I prefer to break things down into wee small chunks um, and that's how I learn best. And then just a few useful links, some places to go on YouTube, on the official Microsoft Education channel. A wee tip, always look for the official education channels or you end up coming across the, hey guys, welcome to my video and it takes about five minutes before it gets to the point. So always keep a wee eye out um, for the official ones. A little link there about transforming a Word document into a swag, so I thought that might be quite popular. And then there's a whole playlist um, of small videos all about PowerPoint hits and tips there as well. Um, when you're trying to use any of the Microsoft tools such as Sway or um, PowerPoint that we looked at today, you sometimes get this popping up as well as the Glow login page. It's just your Glow login, um, your Glow username that goes in there again and that will take you straight to it. I mentioned at the start I had a couple of handy apps um, that I just wanted to very quickly share with you. So these are things that I use when I'm out and about. So if I'm out in schools um, and I've got a little quick video here, I won't go through it just now, but you can have a wee look um, in your own time. It will open up full screen. I was asked to go to Wade to the Games Jam to be one of the judges. So I've got loads of great photographs. I had permission for all these people um, and I had some little video clips. But I wanted to really quickly, before I took the long drive home, share on Twitter all about it. So I used this free app called GoPro Quick. Um, it's basically a slideshow creating, video creating app and it does everything for you. You just select your pictures and then you can click um, different options for the theme, different options for the music, and it does it all for you. And another favourite of mine that I use all the time is another free app called Pick a Collage. It lets you arrange your pictures into various um, different sh um, shapes um, of collage. You have the option to have them sort of moving with a wee animation, and you have the option to add text, and there's a wee example of that there. So just really quick, simple things. Um, that enable you to share your um, footage really quickly. Okay, and that's everything from us. So if anybody has any questions, we're here to answer your questions. If not, thanks very much for joining us this morning.